at Pentecost, he came in mighty fullness then, his witness through believers won the lost, and multitudes were born again, the early Christians scattered o'er the world, they preached the gospel fearlessly. Welcome to worship on this Pentecost Sunday. And as it is Pentecost, we will be celebrating Holy Communion. So as you are preparing and entering this time of worship at home, please be sure that you have your own communion elements ready to partake of later in the service. And as we have said, that can be any type of bread and any type of cup, as long as it is something that will help you remember the body of Jesus which was broken for us, the blood of Jesus, which was shed for us. But I welcome all who are watching our live stream service this morning on this Pentecost Sunday. Let us join together in praying our liturgy for Pentecost.
Holy Spirit of God, we praise and worship you as the one who gave birth to Christ's church. With the sound of mighty wind and flashing fire, you brought life to the church in Jerusalem. You filled those frightened new believers with power, and they became Christ's witnesses, speaking boldly the word of truth. You continue to transform believers, healing, reconciling, empowering. Lives are turned around, emptiness is filled, drifting hearts are given direction. You vitalize your wavering church, lavishing gifts upon us, forging unity, giving new vision. You turn our eyes from the wistful memories of yesterday to the new things you are doing among us now. We worship and extol you, our teacher, guide, and comforter. You make Christ known to us and make us your holy temple. By your presence, the church in all its diversity is welded together in unity. Interceding spirit, we do not know how to pray as we ought but you understand our deepest needs and present them with love to the Father. Lead us now to repentance and confession. Spirit of holiness, we confess that we are a sinful people. In thought, word, and deed, we quench the fire of your love and dissipate the power of your presence. You long to restore us to the image of God, but we let it tarnish as we nurse selfish attitudes. You nurture unity, but we sow discord. You come to make our bodies your temples, but we desecrate them. We dishonor your good intentions for us. Forgive us, merciful spirit. Burn away our impurities and forge us into renewed and useful instruments in your service. Amen. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. The law of the spirit of life in Christ has set you free from the law of sin and of death. Yeah. 
God's promise in these last days. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Upon both men and women in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall speak my message. The Spirit of God dwells in us if we belong to Christ. The Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. When the Holy Spirit comes upon us, we receive power and we become God's witnesses. The fruit of that Spirit brings to the lives of those who follow Christ is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The diverse and empowering gifts of the Spirit are given to each one for the common good. None of us is useless to God. None of us is sufficient alone. We serve through the body of Christ, and we depend upon the people of Christ. The Spirit's gifts are given to equip believers for the work of ministry, to build up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. As we respond to God's love and mercy in our lives, as we acknowledge that we have been forgiven of all of our sins, we can worship and serve the Lord with free and glad hearts. We do have some news of the church to share. Um, one is that following this online service, beginning at 12 o'clock, we're going to do something new, and we're going to have a drive-in Holy Communion service. And there are a few things I want to point out for those of you who are planning to also come to our drive-in service. 
Um, please don't come before 1130 because when you do get here, you'll need to come in through the portico and stop there and there you will receive um, a bulletin for the service and also the communion elements, the bread and the cup that you will need to have when you partake of Holy Communion. So please don't come early and pull in to get a good space because if you do, you won't get what you need to take Holy Communion. Clyde and Evie and others will be there in the portico to give you the elements for communion. Um, and once you are here, please don't get out of your cars. I know the temptation will be great to say hello and to greet those people that you have been longing to see for so many months now. But one of the reasons why we're doing it as a drive-in communion in the parking lot and not here in the sanctuary is, well, one thing, it'd be hard to fit all those cars in the sanctuary. But the real reason is to practice the appropriate social distancing that we need. So it's important that you stay in your cars. Roll down your windows, speak to and greet one another from your own cars. And that service will begin at noon and should last right around 30 minutes. When you arrive in and are able to park, um, please park your car so that they are facing Country Club Road. Um, you'll see that's where we have the stand where the service will be taking place. will be in the um, area near the Christmas trees and also park in every other space. You'll notice that some parking spaces out there are marked with an X. X means don't park there. And we've done that so we can park in every other parking space. I know that's a lot to take in, um, but please just try to remember that as best you can so that we can make this drive-in communion a wonderful opportunity for us to actually come together in person to receive and share in Holy Communion. Also happening today are the New Philly kids are doing their online meeting at 3.30, and Abby wants me to remind you to send your scavenger hunt pictures to her before the meeting this afternoon so that she can share them with everyone else. And also our Sunday school classes continue to meet online. Our middle and senior high youth fellowships also have their regularly scheduled meetings. And now I believe Clyde wants to come up and share about the blessing box. Good morning. As most of you know, the blessing box was installed on Tuesday, and I've had a number of um, questions about what has been taken, what do people like, and what do people not like? What have they left behind? Well, let me just give you a little rundown of how it all has happened so far. On Tuesday evening, 50 items were placed in the blessing box. By Wednesday morning, 17 had been taken out. Um, 20 more were placed in, and another 10 disappeared during Wednesday. Now, it's hard to say so far to make any strong statements or have clear direction about what people want and what they don't. What I can tell you, though, is that in those first two days, peanut butter, pasta sauce, spaghetti, dried beans, energy bars, and raisin bran were all taken out. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings because it is a part of the Moravian diet staple, but green beans weren't touched. Now, neither was the corn, but of course that could all change in a minute. So some of these items may be seasonal, but so far those are items that were taken right away. By Thursday, something wonderful had happened, which is that when I opened the doors, I saw items that did not come from our drive. In other words, that sign on the bottom of the blessing box that says, take what you need, give what you can, is being understood by members of our own congregation as well as perhaps people in the community. So ramen noodles and all sorts of other things that we had not collected were in there. I don't know about you, but it sure feels good to drive by that box and in a week of a lot of darkness in our country, to see our efforts to live, love, and serve like Jesus really made, made me feel good and proud of this congregation. There are two volunteer opportunities available to go along with the blessing box. Right now, we could use some help um, in getting the rest of the food over to the fire station. About half of it has been taken. The other half needs to be transported over and then sorted. So that's one job. 
The other is to come over with some weed killer and some mulch and just make the area around the blessing box look a little more attractive. Um, so there you go, that's it. I'll try to um, provide bulletins for you or, or information weekly or every other week as we see trends. But until that time, just um, keep the donations coming and we'll let you know um, how it's going. Thank you. Thank you, Clyde. And also one note, um, we have been talking about how we will be worshiping online only at least through this Sunday. The Board of Elders are meeting this week to continue that discussion, but we will be having next week for sure an online only live stream service at 10 o'clock. And then we will share more information um, based on the decisions that the Board of Elders make at their Tuesday meeting. But please take a moment while you are watching our live stream and comment and let us know that you are joining us this morning. Um, please just say hello to one another. We have opportunity to respond to God's love and mercy, not only by being the church, but by giving to the church, by giving to the work of Jesus through this congregation, um, you can give online. Um, there are two different options for giving online. Both can be found at the church website, um, newphilly.org, or you can mail in your offerings to New Philadelphia Moravian, 4440 Country Club Road, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, 27104. As we give to God, let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we thank you for the opportunity to give to you in response to all that we have received from you. We thank you for giving us our very lives, for giving us our salvation through Jesus Christ, for giving us the promise of new and everlasting life. And we can't begin to know how to respond to the many ways in which you have blessed us. So we give to you of our time as we serve, like Jesus showed us how to serve. We give to you our lives as we live, like Jesus showed us how to live. And we give to you our love that is seen in all that we say and all that we do. We give to you our love through these tithes and these offerings. For Jesus showed us how to love. And God, we ask that you take all that we have given to you, all that we offer to you this day and always, and bless it and use it. Bless us and use us to share your love to the ends of the earth. We give and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Today's scripture comes from the second chapter of Acts and is the story of the coming of the Holy Spirit, beginning with chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Good morning, everyone. Come and share the children's message with me. So before Jesus ascended to his father, he was talking to his disciples. He promised them that he would send the Holy Spirit to be with them so that they would not be alone and they wouldn't be disconnected from God. If you remember last week, we talked about Jesus ascending or going up to be with God so that he could speak to God on our behalf. In other words, he could listen to us and speak to God for what we need. Jesus could be our voice to tell God what we want to say. But how was God going to speak to us? With Jesus back up in heaven, for God to speak to us, and that Holy Spirit speaks to us for God. Now, we can't see the Holy Spirit. Moving in our church. In I was thinking about the Holy Spirit. I started thinking about a magnet. The way the Holy Spirit of a magnet. What does a magnet do? It pulls things toward it. So if I place a metal object in this magnet's field, it pulls the object toward it. We can't see that pull or that energy, but it's obvious it's there because we can see we can see the object being pulled to the magnet. When I felt God's call on my life and on my heart, it was just like that. I couldn't see God pulling me toward him, but I absolutely could feel it. When I felt him pull me toward him, that 
was the Holy Spirit working and pulling me toward God. We can feel the Holy Spirit leading in our lives and moving us in a direction. He leads us where he wants us to go. But guess what? That's not all a magnet can do. When the opposite ends or poles are facing each other. But when like ends or poles are facing each other, it has the opposite effect. When they're facing each other, they push each other away. I can actually feel the magnets pushing each other away. A magnet can send an object out away from itself. After God pulls our hearts toward him and calls us into relationship, he sends us out to do his work here on earth, to care for people, to share his message, and to do good works. Remember Jesus' last message? Peace be with you. As the Father sends me, so I send you. When he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. And then the Holy Spirit can send us out in every direction to be God's messengers. And adults alike, can you feel the Holy Spirit drawing you closer and pulling you toward God? Spend some time in quiet and stillness this week and see if you can feel it. As Evie said, last week we talked about the ascension of Jesus. When 40 days after Jesus rose from the grave and first appeared to his followers, he was with them again. And this time he gave them his last words. Even though they didn't know at the time they were his last words. But Jesus told them that they would receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem. In all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And then in that moment. They knew they were his final words because Jesus was lifted up from their sight into heaven. And then jump ahead to today, 10 days later. Remember that ascension happened 40 days after Easter. Pentecost happens 50 days after Easter. So 10 days later, those same followers of Jesus were gathered together again. And what Jesus told them was going to happen. It happened. As Clyde read from Acts just a few moments ago, the Holy Spirit came upon them. They were gathered to celebrate Pentecost, which was already a Jewish religious festival. And while they were there together, Jesus' words became reality. The Holy Spirit came upon them like fire, like the rushing of a violent wind. Jesus may have been gone, but the Holy Spirit was there. The Holy Spirit is here. And like Evie said, you can't see the Holy Spirit, but the evidence of the Holy Spirit's presence and power, it was seen and it was heard immediately. Those followers of Jesus, before they decided to answer Jesus' call to follow him, they really weren't anything special. I mean, they were fishermen. They were outcasts. They come from what everybody else considered to be a backward region. Way up there in Galilee, nothing good came from Galilee. Suddenly, these outcasts, suddenly they were able to speak languages that they had never, ever spoken before. Languages that they had never studied or learned, probably never even heard. And the people who were gathered there, people really from the ends of the earth, 
who were living in Jerusalem on that day, they heard them. They heard them speaking the language of their homes. And so they listened to them as they proclaimed God's deeds of power that they, as they had been following Jesus, that they had seen. Now while Christmas and Easter, the other big church festivals, while those two are about Jesus being here, being on this earth with his followers, Pentecost is really about Jesus being gone. It's about what we as his followers, it's about what we're supposed to do now that Jesus is no longer walking on this earth. And as I said, just before he ascended into heaven, with his last words, Jesus told his followers what they were supposed to do once he was gone. And he said, you're going to be my witnesses. Not only in those places you're familiar with, like Judea and Samaria, but you are going to be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. He said, you're going to be my witnesses everywhere even in places that you have never been, places you've never even heard of, maybe even in places that don't exist yet. You're going to be my witnesses in situations that they can't even begin to imagine. Seems as though these events of the past few months We have all found ourselves in situations that we couldn't even begin to imagine. As we have dealt with the effects of a global pandemic that has led to separation, to unemployment, to death. And then this past week, as we've listened and heard and seen the events that have happened in our world made it more clear than ever that Jesus is gone. We're used to living in a world where Jesus is gone. Jesus has not walked physically on this earth since that day he ascended into heaven. But I don't think any of us is prepared or used to Jesus being this gone. This week, as we've seen, one act of violence leading to more and more acts of violence and unrest and pain and suffering. It's hard to see Jesus in this world. It's much easier to believe that Jesus is not in the world, at least not in the way that he once was, at least not in the way that he was when he walked among us as we see our world falling apart around us, it's easier to be overcome with horror and anger and sorrow and sadness and grief and despair. It's easy to wonder, where is God in the middle of all of this? It's hard to see where Jesus is. It's hard to see his light when we're surrounded by so much darkness. And that's why it's more important now than it ever has been for us to be witnesses for Jesus in this world. Pentecost is about how the followers of Jesus have to be witnesses in places that they have never seen or heard of. It's not about them speaking in languages they have never heard of to people in places they have never been. It wasn't about that random act that happened because it wasn't random at all but it was the power of the Holy Spirit 
It was the power of the Holy Spirit that allowed them to speak in those unknown languages. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that came upon them like the rushing of a violent wind. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that enabled them to do things that they had never even thought they could do, never even imagined they would be asked to do. It was the power of the Holy Spirit that made them Jesus' witnesses to the ends of the earth. May this Pentecost, may it be about how we, as followers of Jesus, may it be about how we can become His witnesses in a world that is so very different from the world that we have known. So very different from the world that we were living in just a week ago, just a few months ago. May this Pentecost be the day when we can begin to claim anew the power of the Holy Spirit. A power that will enable us to face a world that we could never have imagined. May the power of the Holy Spirit come upon us this Pentecost and allow us to see, to see not only Jesus in the midst of our horror, our anger, our sorrow, our grief, our despair, but may the power of the Holy Spirit also empower us to be witnesses to Jesus' light and love to a world that is overcome with horror and anger and sorrow and grief and despair. The power of the Holy Spirit is within us. It is among us. It is working in us and through us to make us Jesus' witnesses. So it is up to us to continue, no matter how overwhelmed we may be, to continue to speak to the world about God's deeds of power. It is up to us to continue to be witnesses to the power of the cross, to the forgiveness that comes from Jesus' death, and to the new life that comes through his resurrection. It is up to us to be his witnesses for the light that shines in the darkness, the light that cannot and will not ever be overcome by any darkness. It is up to us to tell the world what we know about Jesus, about his grace, about his forgiveness, and about his love. It is up to us to call upon the power of the Holy Spirit to give us need to help the world to see what we see. That even though Jesus is gone, He is still here. May Jesus be seen in us, in all that we say, and in all that we do. So the world will know that Jesus is here. There is peace in Christ when we learn of Him. Feel the love He felt for us when He bore our sin. Listen to His words, let them come alive. If we know Him as He is, there is peace in Christ. He gives us hope. When we walk with Him, 
through the streets of Galilee to Jerusalem. Mend the broken hearts, dry the tear-filled eyes. When we live the way he lived, there is peace in Christ. He gives us hope when hope is gone. He gives us strength when we can't go on. He gives us shelter in the storms of life. When there's no peace on earth, there is Now we come to the table to celebrate Holy Communion as we commemorate Pentecost. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Thanks be to God. This is when we would normally greet one another by sharing the right hand of fellowship. So before we sing this song, please take a moment to greet one another virtually by letting us know that you're watching and celebrating communion together as a reminder of our unity in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Gracious God, as we come to this table, even though we are not together in one place, we are together 
in one heart and in one spirit. We are united by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and his love for us and our love for him and our love for each other. So we thank you. We thank you for giving us the opportunity to share that love, to share that love received from you, made plain and made real as Jesus died on the cross, as he allowed his body to be broken and his blood to be shed for us and for our salvation. Our thanksgiving, though great, is also filled with sadness and with pain. As we look at the world around us and we wonder how we can help that world to see you and to know you as we see you and know you. Almighty God, use this communion, this time that we are drawn closer than ever to Jesus and to each other to give us the strength that we need to be our Savior's witnesses, to be his love, and to be his light in this dark world. We thank you for sending the Holy Spirit upon us to give us power to proclaim your mighty deeds, the deeds of love and forgiveness made real through Jesus' name. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. by your divine presence, by the holy sacraments, by all the merits of your life, sufferings, death, and resurrection. Bless and comfort us, gracious Lord and God. Amen. Most holy Lord and God, holy, almighty,
In the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus Christ took the cup, gave thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant to us your peace. Amen. No, no. Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
we continue the tradition of you lifting your hand during the final benediction as a way of raising up a prayer request for yourself or for another. And this morning, I lift up my hands for everyone, everyone who is frightened, afraid, and hurting, everyone who is looking to make sense of what is happening in our world. And I lift up my hands for all of us who are trying to be the witnesses of Jesus in the world. Receive the blessing of the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Mm -hmm.